When it comes to developing games, there is one thing that I consider to be way more important than most things when developing a game, and that is inputs. And the reason being is that inputs are required for everything in a game to function. It can go from simply being able to walk around an environment and being able to look around it, all the way up to being able to grab objects, open doors, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of very important things that inputs are necessary for, for the overall interaction and the experience by the player. So in this tutorial, I want to break down how the very basic enhanced inputs are set up and how you can easily implement them into your own character or other assets that you may have in your project. But before we jump into that, if you enjoy this video and want to help support VR Playground, consider becoming a member down below or just hitting that like and subscribe button. All these are great options to help VR Playground, so that way we can help grow and create even more tutorials just like this one. And with that, let's jump right into the video. Now, before we get started with the actual guide portion of this, I wanted to show you real quick what the legacy inputs look like in case you are unfamiliar with or you're curious as to what the difference is between in the enhanced and the legacy input system. So if we go into the project settings, we can go right into input. And in here, we have action mappings and axis mappings. It's really quite simple. And the only reason that we're starting to transition into using enhanced is simply because the action and axis mappings are going to start being phased out slowly over time. So we can come in here, and essentially this is how it would usually work. You would come in here, you would give each action mapping a name, and you would tell Unreal Engine exactly what button is bound to this action mapping. It's really simple, there's really not a lot to it. It was very, very basic. Now by comparison, the Enhance is a little bit different. We don't need the project settings first off. What we want to do is we want to open up our content browser and I already have a folder here called inputs. I'm going to right click and under input, I want to open up an input action and we want to give this a name. So I'm going to call this left trigger. Okay, this is going to be our first input action. And again, this is very similar to what you would experience in the project settings. Now, if you're just using like a simple button like this one, left trigger, there's really not a lot that needs to be done. All you need to do is make sure that this is saved and that's really it. However, if we want to do something a little bit more advanced, for example, we could come right in here. Let's create another new input action. Let's call this one left thumbstick. Okay. So left thumbstick. There we go. And in here, you can see we don't have a whole lot of different options or anything to work with. Going from bottom to top, we have modifiers and triggers. And I'm not going to go into this for this tutorial. If you would like to see a future tutorial, leave a comment down below. Let me know you guys would like to see a tutorial on modifiers and triggers. And then if we come right up here, we have value type. Now, since we're using a thumbstick, we don't want this to be a bool. We want this to either be a float uh, of an axis 1D or we don't want this to be an axis 2D, which is a vector 2D. I'm gonna set this to a vector 2D and I'll also create one that's uh, an axis 1D here in a second. And above this, we also have re reserve all mappings, trigger and pause and consume input. Now you shouldn't really need to mess around with these three all that often. Um, you can mouse over these if you'd like to see a little bit more information on all of these, but you really shouldn't need to modify these at all. You should only really ever need to modify the value type. Now the reason you really only need to modify the value type is actually pretty simple. The value type will help you as the developer determine what type of value you get when you're using any sort of input. So for example, here on the thumbstick, the reason we're using an axis 2D is if we look at a thumbstick, I have a couple here. So we have a gamepad and a uh, motion controller that we'll be setting up. If we look at the thumbstick, it actually is left, right, and up and down. That, that's the very definition of an axis 2D, having two axes on it. Now, alternatively, we could split this into two different axes. We could have uh, a, an axis 1D and have left and right as one and then up and down as one, which I'll be showing you how to do that as well. Once we've made these modifications to the input action, all we have to do is hit save and close down this input action. And I'm going to go and create one more. I'm going to call this one input, input action, and we'll call this right thumbstick X. And we're going to use this as our axis 1D value. I'm not going to bother with the axis 3D. There's really not a lot of 
needs for an Axis 3D, so I'm not going to bother with that uh, for this tutorial. Now that we have these input actions set up, now we need to actually define what buttons are bound to which of these input actions. And this is again pretty simple to do, and it's very similar to what we did in the project settings. All we do is we come up here, input, and then we want an input mapping context. And I'm just going to call this mapping context. There we go. We can open this up. And just like I said, this is very similar to what we had in the project settings. All we do is we hit add action mapping. Then we need to choose one of the action mappings that we set up. So I'm going to start out with the left trigger since this was the first one we set up. And I'm just going to call this left trigger. There we go. And we'll find our input action right there. And then we define which inputs are bound to this input action. So uh, I'm going to use two here. I'm going to use my valve index that I have here. And we can call this valve index left trigger. And then I'm also going to hit this plus button to add a second input. And I want to go into gamepad. And I have j here just a simple gamepad. And I'm going to use, let's see here, gamepad left. I'm not seeing it here. There it is, gamepad left trigger. Uh, it took me a second to find there. And all this means is that if I hit either my valve index trigger or if I hit my gamepad's left trigger, that's going to call this input action. I'll show you how we can use those in one sec. Let's go and set up the other two input actions. So next one, let's do the left thumbstick. There we go. And in here, again, I'm going to do two inputs. Let's start out with the valve index again. We'll do valve index left thumbstick. And since this is a 2D axis, our left thumbstick, you'll recall that we set this as an axis 2D. We can come down here and we see that we have an option for a 2D axis for the valve index left thumbstick. And that's what we want to have there. We can do the same thing for our gamepad. I'm going to type it in this time. We'll do gamepad left thumbstick 2D axis, just like that. Now, the last one is going to be this right thumbstick X. So I'm going to put in one more and we'll do right thumbstick X. Again, we'll do two inputs and valve index is going to go first. The order doesn't really matter, by the way. It, the only reason I'm doing it in this order, I, I like to keep it consistent between all of my different input actions. So that way they're all, they're, they all go from the same system down. So we can do valve index right, and then we want the thumbstick X axis for this one. And you may have recalled this one when we set up the axis 2D. So we do gamepad right thumbstick X axis. So this means that's only going to record our X axis on this one. That's going to be our left and our right value. So we can go and hit save, and now we can close down this mapping context. There's really no more need for that. Now we need to actually use these inputs. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the VR pawn that I have here. So let's go and open this up. And I've removed all of the initial inputs. We'll be doing everything right from scratch. Now, if we go ahead and jump in here and we do our left trigger, you'll see that we do get this enhanced action event. And we can drop this in. You can see that we can start setting everything up. And we have different options for triggered, started, ongoing, canceled, completed, all this kind of stuff. Um, let's go and set real quick. Just a simple print string here. Left trigger pressed. There we go. Now, if we try launching this just as it is right now, so you can see right now all we're doing is printing out a string. Then, let me, let me go and start off with the gamepad. I can go and hit left trigger, and you can see that nothing gets printed. Again, if I go and grab my valve index and hit the left trigger, nothing gets printed. So, what we need to do is go and hit escape out of here. And what we need to do is on begin play, or at some point before we start running any of these inputs, we need to come over here and I'm going to get a player controller. Then I want to get the enhanced input local player subsystem. Then using this, we want to add a mapping mapping context. Just like so. Okay. So the mapping context needs to be the mapping context we created. So it's this one right here. I'm just going to drag this and drop that right in there. And we don't need to worry about priority or options. Um, again, you probably don't need to worry about this in most scenarios. 
So I'm just going to leave it alone. But if you want to add like options, these are the options that you can possibly modify. So we can go and hit compile and save. And now if I go and hit play, you can see if I grab my gamepad, the controller now works. The, the controller will now print out that input that we have. However, if I take my index and hit trigger, you can see that there's still nothing that happens. And the reason for this is actually because of is actually a VR issue specifically. Now, the reason that this is an issue only in VR is actually pretty simple. So if we go into our project settings and we scroll all the way down to the bottom on left hand side, we'll find this option for open XR input. And you'll see that we have this option right here for a mappable input config for XR. And we need to set this. As you can see, this is set to the default, the PMI underscore VR template, but this is no longer relevant to us because we're no longer using those mapping contexts. So what we wanna do, open up our content browser, and I'm just going to add it right here in inputs. I wanna go into input and add a player mappable input config. And I'm just going to call this OpenXR config. And I'm also copying this name as well. And the reason is we need to give it a config name. So I'm just going to control V in there. Um, I don't believe you need a config display name, um, but I'm going to go and drop one in just in case. And then we need to go under context and we need to add in our mapping context here to context. Now, once we're all done with that, we can go and close down our OpenXR config. And in the project settings, we just need to drop in that OpenXR config. And so now if we go ahead and launch the game, you can see again, gamepad will still work. And if I grab my valve index trigger is now working because now we've added in that mapping context into the open XR input. It's very, very simple to do. Now let's go over these input actions that we created. So let's go ahead and drop in the other ones too. So let's grab our left thumbstick. And if we come right up here, you can see again, we have two options here for left thumbstick. Uh, I don't know if, I pointed this out with the left trigger, but if we look at this, we have two options for the left thumbstick. We have this one, which will just give us the value from our left thumbstick. And then we have the other option, Ooh, come on, left thumbstick. And then we have the other option that's basically just going to create exactly what we have here, the same in enhanced input action. And then let me also go and grab our right thumbstick X as well. Okay, so right here, you may already notice that there is one thing that's not similar between all three of these, and that is the action value. And the reason for that is, if you'll recall, we gave our left trigger a bool value, or rather we left it as a bool value. Our left thumbstick was turned into a vector 2D, and our right thumbstick X was turned into just a single float. Now, right above these action values, you also see we have five different execution nodes, and that goes for all of these different uh, enhanced input actions. Now, these work pretty similarly, dependent regardless of which uh, input you're feeding through. So I'll run through these real quick. So I'm going to go out of these just a little bit out of order, just because this going through them in this order doesn't fully make sense. So I'm going to go out of these a little bit out of order. Okay, so starting out with the started, for buttons, this occurs right as soon as the button is first pressed. Now for our thumbstick values, since these are both axis values, started occurs as soon as our thumbstick is no longer equal to zero, zero. Basically all this means is that for thumbsticks, this occurs as soon as we start pushing our thumbstick in any direction. Unless you have stick drift, then this may accidentally occur. After that, we also have completed. Completed for buttons occurs as soon as our button is released. Okay, so this is basically right after, this is kind of considered the end of our input. On our thumbsticks where we have the axis values, completed occurs as soon as our thumbstick is returned back to zero, zero. Basically, it's no longer being pushed in any direction. Again, unless you have any sort of stick drift, then this may continue going on for some time. Now, finally, we have triggered. And triggered occurs the entire time between started and completed. So for buttons, this is occurred, triggered occurs so long as the button is being held down. And for the thumbsticks, this occurs so long as our thumbstick is being pushed in any direction. So we can use this to continuously get a value from our thumbstick, for example, or we can use this to figure out 
if a player is still holding down a button. Now, ongoing and canceled, as far as I found, it does not occur naturally by any sort of thing that the player can do. Um, so it's not really something that I've, that really occurs a whole lot. So there, ongoing canceled really isn't something that needs to be worried about at all. Now, before we finish this off, I also wanted to show you real quick how the action values worked on our thumbstick, because this was something that I think is really interesting and is something that is just really fascinating to me personally. So if we come here into our thumbstick, let's start out with our vector to the left thumbstick. Now I'm going to, on print string, I'm going to run this during trigger, okay? So if we grab our, act uh, our action value, this is a vector 2D, which means that it has an X and a Y value. We can compile and save this, run play, and I'm just going to grab the gamepad here for a second. You can see that as I move around the gamepad, we start getting different values. So for example, as I move it up, you can see we start getting close to that Y1 and X0. I'm having a little, there we go. I, I was having a little difficulty getting exactly. As I move it left, we get negative one on X and roughly zero on the Y. Again, I'm having a little trouble getting the exact value there. If we go down, then we get uh, our negative one on Y and zero on X and right becomes our X1 and our Y0. Again, I'm having a little trouble. There we go, got the exact value. And then as soon as I release, you'll see that, of course, we stop getting that print string. Now, alternatively, if we were to bring this down to our right thumbstick, where we only have the single axis value, so I'm going to run this on triggered. There we go, action value straight into the string. Then we can go ahead and hit play on this one. And this one's tied to the right thumbstick, so if I press right on the right thumbstick, you see we start getting close to one. And this time we're only getting one value because this is just a float. Now, if I move it up, you'll see that I'm still getting some kind of value. Um, I'm trying to see if I can get exactly zero, but I don't think I'm gonna get it. Um, you'll see that we'll still get a value that's going to be close to zero. Same if I go straight down. And then all the way to the left, we're going to get negative one. So this is just going to return a single value on a single axis. And then we also have the option to do a Y value, which would mean that up is going to be one, down is going to be negative one, and anything else in the middle is going to be between either negative one and zero or positive one and zero, depending on um, what, what, what the thumbstick is more leaning to. And that's just a simple rundown of how these enhanced input actions work. And that's it. Enhanced input actions are actually pretty simple to use and very easy to work with. And what's really cool about this form of input action is it allows for us to either enable or disable certain input actions or enable them only under certain conditions. So for example, we could add a mapping context that only enables when a player picks up, for example, a gun. And this would allow for us to only fire that gun if it was picked up. It's a really interesting and honestly makes things a lot easier overall. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. And I also wanna give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.